Thank you for joining the live session. We will start in just a minute. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Let's Get Technical series. I'm Kavita Agrawal, the founder of the XP Invest. And like every Wednesday, we are here to talk about one technical chart and discuss why did we take a trade, what was the analytical uh, motivation behind it. And this way, I'll also impart some swing trading knowledge to you. So today we are talking about Symphony, where we've managed to generate 17% returns in just 12 days. The execution was analysis based and I want to take you through the details which I spotted on the various time frames of Symphony, which encouraged me to not just take this position for myself or in my clients accounts, but also give it to my members of the Trade Together program so that they could benefit from it as well. We were able to achieve the target in this talk in just 12 days. So let's get into the details and take a look at the setup. Um, all right, so here is the symphony chart. But before I get into the chart, I want to remind you that after this session, I will also be answering your question answers. So if you would like to ask me your stock queries, then you are more than welcome to um, hold on. You are more than welcome to hop over to this link and submit your stock requests. Once I'm done talk, taking you through the trade setup for Symphony, I will be answering your questions with my analysis. So be sure to mention your stock name, your uh, cost price, and your comment if you want my help with any stock in your portfolio. So this is the link. I'm, I will be dropping this link in the comments for you to access it more easily. All right, let me first drop this link into the chat box. Awesome, there we go. All right. Awesome. Now let's get started with the symphony analysis. Now, as always, we'll start from the weekly time frame. Now, what do you see on the weekly time frame here? From um, okay, let's also remove some of these vertical lines and actually let's just hide the drawings. So if you look at this weekly time frame, what we can see is that up to the point of December 2017, Symphony showed a very strong uptrend. But since then, it's been in a kind of consolidation or a squeezing pattern. Usually, this kind of pattern gives a very strong breakout. So Symphony does look like it is uh, heading towards a breakout. But uh, and within this consolidation or within this coiling pattern that you notice here, uh, you know, this up, down, up, down, the zigzag pattern, what is very noticeable is that every time the price kind of makes a new upside, the volume is pretty strong there. 
this this does give us an early indication that the expected breakout will be on the upside however let's come back to this current um, setup that we took this orange line that you notice here this is actually the 52 week low of the stock which means that since at least one year and if you look further behind back in october 2018 uh, march 2020 november 2020 June 22 and then November 22 again, multiple times, this same level of 820 has acted as a very, very strong support for Symphony. So when the price finally approached this level again on the 18th of March or the 14th of March, I was already prepared because Symphony is a part of my watch list. I had an alert set from a very long time that if the stock comes below the level of 825, I want to get alerted. As soon as that alert went off, so on the daily time frame, what we can also see, the analysis suggested that the RSI, which is quite bullish, looking quite bullish. Why? Because uh, in the last upside, we created not only a higher high on the prices, but also the RSI spent a significant amount of time above the level of 60. This, in my eyes, is bullishness. Okay, This shows that there is bullish momentum. Now, towards the end, there was a negative divergence, which indicated towards a price correction, which is quite normal in the uh, course of any price action unfolding. Bringing back our drawings. So what we saw was that on 13th of March, the price basically my alert got triggered and I started monitoring the stock, which means this stock got entered into my pink list, which is my monitoring list, right? And there onwards, I wanted to ensure that I didn't miss the upside. One more thing that I observed when I did the past trade analysis or, you know, the past price action analysis was that when the stock starts moving up from the support level, the move happens pretty quickly, which means I don't really get the opportunity to wait for a confirmation and then enter the stock. So what happened here was on the 21st of March, when this very small cross candle got formed, this is when I decided it was a very good time to enter. But before that, let's go a few time frames lower and take a deeper look at the stock. All right. So on the 75 minute time frame, one very important phenomena happened, which urged us to take a long position. That was this strong positive divergence. So you can see as the price approached the support zone of 820 to 825, the RSI on the 75 minute time frame reached the level of 30. Why? Because the momentum with which the correction was happening was quite strong. But as soon as the support was breached, the price went into sideways consolidation. And this sideways consolidation actually uh, helped the RSI move back above the level of 30, creating a positive divergence. Within the sideways consolidation, whenever the price was going up, the momentum was stronger versus the price going down. Now, remember what is RSI basically? Uh, for whatever period you've set. Now, I prefer to use a 25 period on my RSI. So what it does is that within those 25 days, it will take a sum total of all the up days versus all the down days, create a relative strength, and then plot that on a band of 100. So what it is saying that within the last 25 candles, how strong or how much movement was there on the up days versus the down days? So if the up days had more movement clocked in versus the down days, it means the momentum is getting stronger. You know, it's a very, very subtle calculation that the RSI does. And that is why it is infallible because it is based in mathematics. It's just pure logic. You cannot go from zero to hundred without going from like without going through 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. Right. It's pure math. So that is what it showed here. This positive divergence was an indication that the momentum was shifting. That is, the up days were getting stronger than the down days. So this was another positive signal. Now, if we go down to the 15-minute time frame, the 15-minute time frame led us to believe a phenomena called eclipsing was happening here. Now, not the solar eclipse that we've seen recently, but eclipsing basically means that here also we noticed a positive divergence and then a positive range shift. So when you see positive signals at the same time on the 15 minutes, 75 minutes and the daily time frame, basically multiple time frames, it is called the phenomena of eclipsing. And these usually make up for very, very strong trade setups. All right. So um, here everything pointed to the direction of uh, Symphony giving a potentially very strong turnaround. 
So naturally, it was a very good entry point. The stop loss had to be really small because if the level of A20 got breached, then naturally we'd get out of the stock because this is a multi-year low. And if the price is not able to sustain it, then we don't want to risk our capital, right? So the stop loss was extremely low there. And I kept, kept a very conservative target over here of around 971 rupees. Why? Because it matched the previous high. So when I'm doing swing trading, I tend to keep very conservative targets. Why? Because in swing trading, especially if the market dynamics change, there's a pretty good chance that, um, you know, the target may not be achieved. So because our entry is always based on a ratio of the target over the stop loss, which is the risk reward ratio, the reward risk ratio, however you wish to call it, uh, it is very important that we stay realistic while deciding both the target and the stop loss. All right. So from our entry point of around, let me take a, so uh, of around say 830 rupees, the target over here was, like I said, 17%, right? And our stop loss over here was barely 3%, which meant that a risk reward ratio was well over 5. It was a very attractive opportunity. So the idea was given to, or the stock, the trade setup was immediately given to members of my Trade Together program. The Trade Together program is basically an initiative where I, as a SEBI, research, SEBI registered research analyst, I share my trade ideas or my stock recommendations or my trade setups with members who want to swing trade based on my analysis, right? So in the Trade Together program, I gave this recommendation to the members and soon enough, the stock moved up, galloped and within a matter of just two weeks, it gave us a target achievement. However, um, this trade setup was not and a trade setup in swing trading is never as simple as entry and exit. Between entry and exit, there's a lot of management that goes in uh, because remember, every trade setup is not the same. So here we had, like I said, set up an initial stop loss. So that stop loss was initially somewhere around the level of 810. And uh, we had to look out for the next resistance before we could adjust this stop loss or trail this stop loss. So that first resistance for me was around 854. So when the stock price moved above this level of 854 here, gave me a confirmation, it meant I could revise my target up to my most recent low, which is over here, the level of 820 roughly, right? Which is basically the most important support, which meant that now I had to decide on the next resistance. So this becomes the naturally the next resistance because here what happened as soon as the stock price created this breach of resistance, it went up, created a high, came back to retest its own resistance, which now has become the importance moving up because we have a recent high we place that as our resistance next day what happened over here was the price moved up with a it opened with a gap up and continued to move up really really strongly which means we had another opportunity to revise our stop loss in this case again the most recent low will become a stop loss but at the same time we also need to identify the most important or the immediate resistance level right so this is the immediate resistance now, as you can see that in the first 75 minute candle of the opening on um, 2nd of April, the resistance was breached, which meant that with the opening itself, we could revise our stop loss. Now here, I because the strong momentum had been set, I chose the immediately prior support as the new stop loss level, which is 887. Next was once this got breached, which was again like pretty much the same day, it was time to identify the next resistance and set up our next stop loss. So the next resistance was actually very, very close to our um, target level. However, I still uh, prefer to keep my stop losses quite tight on all my active positions. So 920 became our next stop loss. We didn't have to revise our stop loss any further because the very next day the target was again achieved. Now since then the stock price did take a little bit of a correction and it does look like it can continue to rally but the reason why I haven't reactivated the stock idea is the volumes. If you notice the growth in volume has become a little bit subdued. Also the RSI is well above the level of 70 um, on um, the 75 minute time frame and the RSI is showing a small negative divergence on the 15 minute time frame. So basically I am waiting for the stock to come 
to trigger basically the level of 40 on the 15 minute time frame so that I can take a risk managed re-entry into the stock. Remember, stocks usually have a tendency to give sharp corrections after small rallies, right? But if we go back to the daily time frame here, now because the stock has managed to stay above the 200 EMA of the weekly time frame, now this is the 200 EMA of the weekly time frame, which is equal to 1000 EMA on the daily time frame, right? Now because the stock is sustained to do that after a very, very long time, if you notice the stock took strong resistance here, the stock took strong resistance here and here from the daily time frame. Now that it has, just like here, it has managed to give a breakout, some correction can be expected back to the 200 EMA of the weekly, 250 EMA, 200 EMA of the weekly time frame, and we can expect another leg of upside here. So I am basically also waiting for the price to kind of come back and touch the level of maybe 960. Let's just set this alert quickly here. Once that is touched, that is where we want to basically re-enter the stock for another potential leg of rally. Now that you know my trade setup, you can also set the alert and you can also execute the same. Just be sure to set up a stop loss and be sure to uh, manage your stop loss properly. Now, if you want to participate in this trade setup, do join my Telegram channel. The link has been dropped in the comment. I will be announcing this stock as stock of the month. And you can get the stock template, which will mention the stop loss, target, remarks, uh, risk reward ratio, sector, risk level, and a lot more information to help you make, the, make an informed decision. And it will be posted on my Telegram channel. So be sure to join the Telegram channel to get this stock recommendation in a couple of days. So with that, we have come to the end of the discussion that I wanted to do with you. I wanted to share this trade setup and hopefully you've been able to learn something new. If you did, please be kind and give a thumbs up to this live stream. It will make my day. Now let's move on to your stock requests and help you out with the positions you might be stuck in. All right. I have my list open right here. Um, and just to go back. I want to show you So this is the stock request form. And uh, if you go over to this link, expinvest.in slash stock request, the link is also in the comment if you want to copy paste on your browser. Um, go over to this link and fill up this form. It's very easy. All you need to do is enter your name, uh, enter your WhatsApp number, and use the format NSE colon ticker name to enter the stock with which you need help. If you don't know the ticker name, just go over to Google, write the name of the company, and write ticker name. Google will tell you what the ticker name is. Like, for example, Geo Financial Services Limited is... NSE colon geofin, right? Enter that name. Enter the average cost price at which you've bought it because if you're holding the stock, then I'll be able to tell you what your stop loss should be, whether it's a good idea to hold the stock or not, or whether you should just exit it. You know, sometimes it's better to rip the bandit off to let the wound heal. Same way, sometimes it's better to just book your losses and salvage whatever capital is there to take advantage of the opportunities available. A lot of people do this humongous mistake of holding on to losers in the portfolio. This does not help you achieve your objective in the market, which is to make money, which is to grow your capital, right? If you're coming to the market, you've come with the sole objective of growing your capital. But if you keep your capital stuck in underperformers, you're not going to achieve that objective. For retail traders, this can be a really, really hard decision. But coming from a professional, it can be an easier decision for you, right? So enter your comment if you're holding or whatever. There are some terms of use. Review it very quickly. Now, with that, let's move on. Um, so far, if you can see on my screen, I have helped. Let's see how many people. I have helped nearly 100 people with their stock requests. So uh, these are the people that we are going to be uh, helping out today these this is another 11 requests so be sure to add your request into the list so the next time 
I do the uh, stock and stock request analysis on screen. It's your turn, and then my team will reach out to you and tell you, share, give you the link, the comments, the support, resistance, or the stop loss target, whatever I've done the research. They'll share the analysis with you on your WhatsApp number, right? So with that, let us get started. All right. Um, I'm going to leave this link on the screen so that you can uh, hop over to the link and fill in your uh, request too. Now, Nilesh Rastogi is asking for eMudra Limited. I believe I have done the analysis of the stock before, but let's get into it again. So it's eMudra, not eMudra Limited. Uh, now that we have that, let's get into it. All right. So eMudra, I can see that the stock has already posted a pretty strong rally. Um, I can see I've drawn, for whatever reason, two sets of trend lines. So I'm going to remove one set. And I'm actually going to redraw the trend lines because I didn't think the word, those were parallel. So this method of trend line drawing that I use, right, it's called cloning method. Um, it's something that I've kind of come up with on my own, you know, since I've been practicing over 12 years. I've had a lot of time to do trial and error on technical analysis methodologies and I have realized that it works really really well so eMudra I really believe that it does not have a lot of steam left and it is experiencing some strong resistance at this trend line here um, as long as the level of 676 does not get breached right um, if that doesn't get breached all right so Nilesh is holding the stock since 480 and is currently sitting on 70% returns. Your own target is 960, right? Um, I would set a target of also 960. So very good job on coming up with the target there because vertically, if I have to draw upward, actually my target would be 950 or 948-ish here, coinciding with the uh, coinciding with the trend line but 960 also is not an unreasonable target because as you can see the stock has a tendency to kind of top out rather than give a very sharp or v-shaped tops so here we would expect the stock to basically move in this fashion as long as the stop loss of 676 is not breached right we can expect the stock to move up in that way take a little bit of uh resistance against the trend line and then come down However, if this trend line gets breached here, then I would expect further upside in the stock. The uh, daily time frames RSI does not suggest that to be a very prominent reality. Plus, here if you can see the formation of the inverted hammer right at the resistance is also not a very good sign. So I would strongly urge you to use the stop loss at the level of 675 to be conservative. And on the upside, set a target of 900. 50 or 960 for the time being all right so let's move on to rajiv's request for nse kandhar oil refinery industries limited okay uh cost price is 310 so like i was saying holding on to losers is never going to do you any good and you've bought the stock clearly in the ipo see this is my thing against ipo and this is also why i never number one invest in ipos myself Number two, I never recommend anybody to apply for IPOs. It is an unnecessary capital block. The allocation is too small. The amount of attention each lot requires is too much. And the success rate of IPOs is terrible. I don't know why it is so popular among retail traders. I guess because the successful um, IPOs are overhyped beyond reasonable limits. But IPOs are actually an underperforming uh, investment vehicle if you look at statistical data here is one example so Gandhar uh, if I have to see it is in a strong downtrend and it does not look like the trend is going to change there is nothing on the 75 daily or even the 15 minute time frame which suggests the beginning of a uptrend so I would strongly suggest you to exit the stock right away book your losses and salvage whatever capital you have invested here all right, so for Lokesh, we will look at Mastar. I like the stock. 1900. 
All right. So you've noticed pretty well that the stock is showing a flagpole pattern. It's basically called a flag pattern, not a flagpole pattern. But you are right in observing that it is showing a flag pattern, except for one thing that if for it to be a valid flag pattern, we need the flag part to be downward sloping. This is not really downward sloping. Uh, but the pole part is pretty, pretty, pretty correct. Now, um, what I can see is that there is a bit of a negative divergence on the 15 minute time frame. However, the volume in the pole part of this pattern has been pretty strong, which does suggest that the pattern can potentially continue. Now, uh, let me clean up the chart a little bit and a uh, strong uptrend. Uh, this is what bothers me slightly. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to redraw my trend lines because somehow it is not looking very good to me from an intuitive sense. Uh, so this looks pretty good covering the peaks. And over here, we've got covering the support. And over here, we've got a section of price where we can maybe draw another trend line to cover all the prices. And over here, we see that the recent price activity is still kind of spilling out. Let's go to the daily time frame. And this looks like a pretty good set of trend lines. However, we can what we can notice is that there was a temporary breach here, right? There was a temporary breach here through this entire zone. If I stretch this out, um, and then there is also this 200, 250 EMA of the daily time frame passing through, which has kind of lent support. And not the first time that the 250 EMA has lent support. It lends support here. It's lent support here. Um, it lends support here, here. Um, we'll also uh, here most definitely and kind of over here also with a little bit of a breach. So 250 is a pretty strong support zone for mass stock. And what we can see is that the stock kind of gave up rallying around on the 8th of September. It's a very, very good stock, very, very good company. Uh, the rally that was unfolding also occurred with strong volume. So if you're wondering, if you're looking at my volume um, indicator and wondering what it is, this is actually the MECD tool used for setting up the volumes. This is the setting that I like to use it. So the source here is volume indicator itself, the raw volumes, basically. The raw volume is hidden. And this is the setting, you know, in case you want to duplicate it. The reason why I like to use this is it makes the volume difference, the change in volume activity uh, pop out in high definition, which really adds to my analysis, right? Because at the end of the day, the exact volume number is not what we care about. It is a change in volume that we care about. So that's that. Now, what I can see is that the support has been taken and a strong rally with very good volumes has occurred. Key EMA levels have also been breached on the upside. And here the price is taking a little bit of a consolidation. Now, coming to the 15 minute time frame, see, the thing is that it's very good stock for holding on. Uh, it is also very good stock for taking fresh position at this point of time. Your stop loss, unfortunately, will be a little big. It'll have to be 2035 at the least. You can't set a stop loss smaller than that because then there'll be a chance that you get whipped out. Because like I said, this is not a downward sloping flag. So it can come back to kind of read as this cluster of EMAs that it has just breached, right? So set the stop loss. And as for the target, I would expect this entire 20% to get extended from the point that the uptrend begins. Now that point is obviously not this that point will only be determined when the uptrend really, really begins. But if I have to give you a target on the basis of the visible resistance on the chart, I would set the target at around 24.75. So right now, as you can see, this the risk reward ratio is not attractive. It's only one. So I would want to wait to see the stock test the level of either 2160 or come back down. So I'm going to set two alerts right here, right? And 
and I'm going to set another alert right at the peak of this correctionary zone. So once the correctionary zone gets breached, I still have an upside of just 9% and a downside of 5%. Still, the risk reward ratio is not good. Um, but if I can take a bit of a longer term position here on the 75 minute time frame, right, then I can set my target as lot higher. I would actually expect this stock to rally all the way to the peak of this uh, channel. So that would set my target at the level of 4,800, but that's a very overreaching target. If you can, however, hold the stock for the long term, then you should definitely hold it for the target of around 4,800. And then your stop loss should be around the level of 1,800. That would make a more attractive trade setup. So this stock is more suitable for the long term participation rather than short term participation. It can be a little volatile in the short term. All right. So we have a request from Sanjay Ji. He is asking for the analysis of K solves. K solves India. Now analyze this stock before it's my first time looking at it. But I can see it has a very strong uptrend here. And if we look at some stats, the market cap is really small. So it's a it's almost a micro cap slash small cap stock. So liquidity is going to be an issue that you want to look out for. That being said, said the stock seems to have created a, a low here. So that would become your uh, stop loss for both your short term position as well as long term holding. Also, the 250 EMA acts as a very good support. That support has just been tested just like we saw in mass stock. So uh, 1018 would be your uh, stop loss in either case. For the short term, you can expect 1418 to be your target, which means it's not an attractive setup for the short term because your risk reward ratio is not attractive, barely two. So 27% over 12% is not more than three, right? So I would not suggest participating in the stock for the short term. However, the stock does look good for a long term. But there's another risk that the stock can go into sideways consolidation here. So only invest in the stock if you're okay holding on to it for a period of at least one to two years. Now, moving on for Krishna Prasad, looking at HDFC Bank. All right. So we've got HDFC Bank here. We saw some correction. Clearly, I've done lots of analysis on HDFC Bank in the past have to remove the drawings because I can't see anything on the charts anymore. All right. So we've just got the EMAs now and HDFC Bank is a really super trender. Um, but there is something that I don't like in HDFC Bank and uh, that is this right here. You see this negative divergence on the weekly time frame. Um, I mean, you can say in a way that the weekly divergence the negative divergence has been paid out because 250 EMA did get tested. Uh, and then we see some turnaround with kind of high volumes. I would not be very comfortable participating in this right now. I am kind of waiting for another retest of this level around 1460. And that is where I would be more comfortable. So uh, in participating in the stock, because then my stop loss would be around maybe 5% and then my upside would be 15%, right? But I need to see the stock come back down to the level of 1450, which is a possibility because, you know, the stock has just come out of a correction, taken a strong up move and it can come back down to retest this previous high. So if not, yeah, 1470 is a more realistic level that we can expect the stock to come back down to retest. All right. Now let's take a look at Biocon for BG. Um, holding since 390. Uh, okay. Wow, you've been holding. You've been very patient holder. You've been holding in since many, many, since two years more 390 mm. 
I am not very bullish on Biocon yet. It has yet to prove itself. And even once it does, it can take a pretty long time to um, reach a break-even point. It is not a very good idea to keep holding on to losers with the hope of reaching break-even. Uh, right now, the market offers a lot many more attractive opportunities which you might want to participate in. So I would suggest you to exit this position and uh, maybe join my Telegram channel if you're interested in getting my trade setups. All right. So guys, that's time for me. Um, due to personal commitments, I'm going to have to take off. But thank you so much for joining the live session. I will see you again on Friday in my Market Outlook series where I will bring to you the analysis of Nifty, Bank Nifty, and the intersected charts. We'll do a momentum analysis to see where the momentum is headed so that we can park our money there. Now, if you want to connect with me or if you want to work with me um, on swing trading or if you want to join my upcoming advanced swing trade bootcamp, then join my Telegram channel because on Sunday I'm conducting a free interactive session of 30 minutes to answer your questions related to swing trading and to help you assess whether it is a good uh, pursuit for you or not, right? So I will see you on in my Telegram channel right after this live session. And don't forget that I will also be sharing in a couple of days a trade setup for the Symphony stock if you want to participate in the next leg of upside that is due to unfold in the stock there. So I will see you again on Friday, 5 p.m., same place. Thank you so much for joining today's session. Namaste.